So finally, we're going to get this collage done. This is the Hope collage. We're going to get fabric mosaic done. We're going to do the copper leafing, as you see here. We're going to finally finish it. Welcome back, friends. So this is a sneak peek of me doing the fabric mosaic, but we're also going to do copper leafing in here. And at the very end, we're going to add the word hope at the top. But we have two places where we're going to put copper leaf. And this fabric mosaic part, you'll be kind of watching over my shoulder a little bit. I will explain some areas exactly what I'm doing. And then um, you'll see the entire thing complete. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to start the fabric mosaic in the hand. So into the fingers, all the way down the arm on this piece. So this is a paper backed fabric made by Jacquard. It's cotton. And I will put a link below. I love this stuff. It prints, you could print with your inkjet printer on fabric, on cotton fabric. So I created a Photoshop document where I'm just repeating this phrase and um, I'll read it to you because I think this really inspires me. Maybe it'll inspire you as well. I have hope and I am hope. I am driven by hope even in the darkest times. I hope you feel hopeful today. So that's it. It's just repeated. It's just an affirmation that's repeated on fabric. And we are going to use a fabric wheel on this, you know, self-healing mat, which is covered in paint and not in great shape. Uh, I printed three of these because I have a feeling I need, I need a lot of them. I hope that three is going to be enough. I can always print more. But this, um, I can't remember how much the paper, the the fabric is, but um, it's, it's not too cheap. Anyway, I am aware that I could print fabric by putting the fabric onto freezer paper. I am aware of that. This works better for me. I really love the quality of this fabric. I don't want to go nuts trying to find the perfect fabric to print on. I will waste a lot of ink in my inkjet trying to figure out which one prints best. So this is how I choose to do it. If you choose to do it on freezer paper, that's fantastic. This is how I choose to do it. So I'm going to cut up some triangles and I'm going to start adhering it. I might touch this up a little bit with some black gesso before we get started. We don't want any of that peeking through my triangles or around my triangles. So sometimes another thing that I do when I really need a lot of fabric is I order from Spoon Flower. If you're not familiar with Spoon Flower, they are, you can design your own fabrics with repeatable patterns. And they will print it for you. It is pretty fantastic. So in some cases I'm going to use this wide brush and in some cases this little smaller one but it's got something on it. I have a feeling that almost looked like gold, gold leaf or something. Hopefully I didn't use it with gold leaf. Love these brushes. These are Catalyst by Princeton Poly Tip Bristle. They are fantastic. I have them in different sizes like I just used here and they are great for using with gel medium they don't get they don't get ruined so I always start by moistening my brush first and I keep a you can't see it on camera but I keep a shop towel nearby to um, get the excess off so this part here is going to be 
um, copper leaf. So I think I'm going to start on the other end. Give this a chance to dry. And uh, this part's really easy anyway. So that might be a great place to start. So the reason why I use this is it's just easy. So normally I would be having this on a cam on a easel and I would just be using my countertop here to do my cutting. But this is the best way to videotape it, I think. I don't know, we might we might switch that up. And these blades work really well when they're sharp. So as you can see, I just cut random because in the very beginning, um, especially in these bigger areas, it really doesn't matter. And then later when I get into like the filling in the blanks, then I have to like cut more carefully. Okay, so we're just going to start from the edge and work our way across. So I'm very random about this, like I said in the very beginning. And then as we get further along, um, it becomes more like a puzzle. And we have to start being more thoughtful about the shapes. Like this is going to need a longer, skinnier shape. And I try, like if the type is going one way, I try to do it a different way. I don't want them lining up. So this part does go very, very fast. I'm going to continue till I get to the fingers. I will just speed up. When I get to the fingers, I'll show you how I place the direction of the type to actually show the finger, even though this is a silhouette. And it kind of tricks the eye into knowing where the fingers really are.
Okay, so I'm going to start doing the fingers and then I will start tackling these smaller areas that I have to sort of try to cut. Some of them are going to be easy because they're still big, but, um, you know, an area like this is going to be challenging here. I have to make it kind of fit like a puzzle a little bit. Um, I don't get too upset if I have a little black showing. Um, I think it adds to the overall texture. That's the plan. But what I like to do where the fingers cross so that it, you know, if I just put in, you know, pieces like this, it doesn't read as a finger. So I'm going to put one that goes like this. And that will make this, this finger, I'm going to do it as well here, it'll make it kind of stand out. And then what I might do back here is add a little bit of, you know, cut a piece so that there's a little bit more black right along the edge. Um, and, you know, let this finger be the one that's in the background. I'm not sure how that's going to work yet. We'll see. Um, but that's what I usually try to do is um, use the direction of the type to indicate um, things that are overlapping in a silhouette. And I wish I could have done that with all of the fingers, you know, like we've got a thumb here <laughs> that we're not seeing. But um, at least where the most important two fig fingers that are crossing, we're going to get, you know, that definition here. Anyway. I hope that makes sense. And it's also nice when you get some of the words in that, you know, supports the whole phrase and allows somebody to read an entire part, section. So some of these straight pieces allow us to do that. So I'm going to make sure on this side, I'm going to choose a different phrase than this one, like um, probably I am, you know, I have hope, I am hope. I'd like to put that on the other side. And I might have the text, I'm going to cut close to the text at the top. Maybe do this one like really skinny. Now, the nice thing about fabric is it also, it's bendable. If this was paper, it would not be bendable. So that's one of the reasons why I like to work with fabric when I do a lot of these. Um, now, now, obviously, it's not going to bend completely around like this. Then we're going to get problems. But a slight bend is possible. So even though we've already used that below, I'm going to use a little bit of it here. I'm going to cut off a little bit more on this side. I just want to get this edge. See what I mean by bending it? Now, this is a different story, so usually what I try to do is make curves. And if they don't always work, like it looks like this little piece needs to come off. That worked out pretty good. Now, I've been doing this technique for a really long time, so you'll notice that I kind of almost can tell like what I need to do. Um, that might take a little practice. Now, I don't want to do that because it's too close, but too close to the same thing, but I'm going to put this here. I try to use whatever pieces I have left over here on the table whenever I can. 
think I'm going to add some water to my gel medium because it's starting to get goopy. It's better to start with a little and I use a popsicle stick or sometimes a plastic spoon. This was a short popsicle stick. But that might have been just enough. It looks like a good consistency. So I'm going to just leave that.
and just notice the spot. Okay, I'll fix that. And then we're going to do a frisket over the whole thing to protect the hand and the and the collage so we can do our copper uh, our copper here is going to be here our copper leaf let me just fix this because this black on black is really hard but now that i see it on camera i see that that is missing Okay, so unfortunately now I have to wait for that to dry before I could cut the frisket. The other thing that I was thinking of doing, is this, this area right here is very black. And against the black, it's, it's not, you know, at least here this is blue, but this is black. dry and then I'm going to cut the frisket and trim the edge after, after I seal the frisket edge I'm going to put the glue for the um, copper leaf anyway we let that dry for about 20 minutes and then we apply the copper I cannot wait to see what it looks like with the copper I think it's going to be beautiful okay the more I look at it, the more unhappy I was with the blue. Because again, it's just, there's not enough contrast there. So, found this other paper. And this introduces more of the red like I wanted. Now we've got the contrast we need around the fingers. Okay, so I'm going to cut some frisket around here and the fingers. And I'm just going to have the frisket come to about here. get started in the corner just off camera there we go sorry I just lightly cut the corner not all the way through in this case I did all the way through okay let's try again lightly I guess my blade is so sharp let's go even lighter There we go. And I have to get my catalyst wedge. Must have catalyst wedge. <laughs> um, and so I start from the top. Pull the back out. Okay. 
And now we cut. That's the part that has to stay down. This is the part we're lifting and exposing so that we can put our glue down. Okay, so now I'm going to use my catalyst wedge to make sure my edges are really down good. And I'm going to, when I apply my glue, I'm going to try to do it away from the edge so I get a clean edge. If I was painting, I would seal it with some um, gel medium. But I'm afraid if I do that in this case, that the glue won't, won't stick, stick too well. So anyway, this is what I use. I don't even know where if I can find this anymore, but it's called Gilding Size. It's a water-based leaf adhesive. And it's not as easy to find as it used to be. So I put the saran wrap so that I can get it open. <laughs> And now I can't get it open. I got it open. Anyway, I put the saran wrap because trust me, once you put that lid on, it's glued on. And uh, that is not fun. So a couple of other things that I like to have on hand are these brushes. This is going to be the brush that we use to, you know, work in the the gold or in this case copper this we might like need to roughen it up a little bit maybe so we're going to leave that handy but I need to find a brush that I can use for the sizing so these are inexpensive brushes I don't want to use anything super high quality and again I'm going to go away from the edge. I don't want it to get underneath the frisket. So you apply this as evenly as you can and then you let it sit for 20 minutes and it dries to like a tacky, just like a little bit tacky to the finger um, and then it's ready for the leaf. So you see why we have to use the frisket. This would have been almost impossible to get that clean edge without the frisket. Okay, sorry about that. I wasn't recording and I already started and I've already made a mess. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to try to put another big piece here. My copper does not want to stick to the freezer paper. That's what this is. This is freezer paper. I'm going to try a fresh sheet. That's why we ended up with a mess. I'm going to also try to grab from the other side. So usually it clings to it. You just lift it up. I'm going to try to put this in right here. And then we use our brush to get into, you know, to kind of push it down into the glue and to also get around the edges. You have to go over it very lightly and it kind of any part that's not stuck to the glue will lift and this top area here is going to have the word hope Okay, let's try lifting off our frisket very carefully around the edges. So now what I do with the rougher, these are rougher brushes, is I knock off the edges.
Okay. That part is done. And as you can see, my desk is now a mess. But isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful copper finish. Okay, so the next step, we're going to use this stencil. And we're going to put Tacky When Dry Gel Medium in these openings. And we're going to do that even in this area. I'm going to go up and around. Um, but then I have to, because my stencil is not wide enough, I'm going to have to do this edge over here. I think I'm going to flip it around. Okay, so now I've laid down my stencil and I'm going to put the tacky wind dry medium in the openings. Obviously, my stencil is not quite big enough, so I am going to have to, you know, take this edge and come back over here eventually. But for right now, we're going to, and we're also not going to touch this middle area. I think, but we're going to go all the way across. So maybe we will do this. Let's just go for it. Anyway, I'm going to dip in here. This is just a little sponge applicator. Okay. So thanks for staying till the end. I have a little announcement. I know I had an announcement a couple of weeks ago, but now I have another announcement. Things are changing around here. I am starting a Patreon channel. A couple of people have asked me in the comments if I had one, and I thought, okay, it's time. It's time to create a Patreon channel. So in that channel, we're going to do more collage, more experimenting, more jelly printing, just more, more, more. And the first 20 people who sign up on any level are going to be invited to a Zoom call. It will be an hour-long call where we can do questions and answers and just have a good time and meet each other. So I hope you will join me. We are, it's already like a soft launch, but there's hardly anything in there yet. March 1st is the real date, and sometime at the end of March we will do our Zoom call. So please, check it out. I truly appreciate everyone that watches my videos here at YouTube, and I am trying to make this into a real business so that I can do this full time. I would much rather be with you guys Monday through Friday. So one of the reasons why I wanted to start the Patreon channel was because of community, because I want to actually see you guys. So one of the levels will have monthly Zoom calls. But like I said, no matter what level you choose to join, you will be invited to that first one. I guarantee we will have a good time. So thanks for everything. Thanks for watching. I will still be here. I will still be here on YouTube. Same as always. Okay, let's get back to work. Let's get this collage finished. So I still have the, the copper leaf to do. And then once that's done, we're going to work on the word hope at the very top. So right now it looks milky and it will dry clear. I'm going to flip it, but I need to wash it first. So I'll be right back. So now I have to let that dry and then I'm going to copper leaf on top of that. I want to show you here is still kind of milky. The rest of them have dried very clear, but in the light you can see, hopefully you can see where my pattern is. So when they're all, when it's all not milky, couple of wet spots still. That's when I'm going to do the copper. So we still have a few more minutes. Okay, it looks like it's ready. So back to struggling with the copper. <laughs> Let's see. Again, if we could get this to work, I'm going to try burnishing it a little bit more so that it will stick to this. Okay, maybe that works. I'm going to start from the corner this corner. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and you can just watch me rub off all of the copper leaf. So uh, 
I want to exp explain a little bit more about the, uh, why I used the Tacky When Dry uh, gel medium instead of the glue that I used when I did the circle. The glue, that glue is very watery and if I had tried to put, you know, brush that through, let's say a stencil, it would have gone underneath the stencil. It would have, it, I've tried this before, trust me, it doesn't work. It goes underneath the stencil and then you get a real mess. So if you want to really control it, the tacky wind dry is at least the consistency of like a soft gel. So when you, you can use a little brush like I did to sort of um, dab it through the stencil and not make so much of a mess. And at this stage, now that it's dry, it's doing a great job of allowing the leaf to cling to it. So I was really wishing I had my wax paper here today because this freezer paper is not making it for me. It's not clinging to it quite as nicely as the wax paper does. Um, I, last time I used it, it worked beautifully, So, but that was gold leaf, so maybe there's a difference. Anyway, it's not working with this one, so I would suggest that you use the wax paper and not the freezer paper. And you can always touch up. So like, see how there's some areas where it's not clinging that good. You can always go back in with your uh, Tacky Wind Dry, add a little bit more. You can always touch it up. So don't fret if, you're, if your you know, leaf is not looking perfect. I, I was getting a little bit nervous, but I was able to fix everything. It looked good in the end. So... Um, I would choose when you're working with a stencil something that's a little organic looking because you're not going to get a perfect application. It's just not going to happen. So I will say that in some areas it did also stick to the paint for some reason. Like up towards the top of that circle you'll see some areas was the, the copper leaf was clinging to the paint there and I don't know why. Maybe because it was a, a little bit more um, textural or something. I don't know. So I had to do some touching up in that area as well. But, you know, it's all dual. It's like, you know, push and pull with acrylic paint and with gold leaf and mixed media in general. So, um, but it's all fixable. So I just want to mention at this time that I'm using also a Cricut to cut the word hope that's going to be at the top of that, where that big circle was. So here is my cut out hope. And I'm like I said, I used removable vinyl, vinyl, which is the silver part. The clear part is like a transfer tape. And all that is, is allowing me to carefully position the removable vinyl temporarily. So once we get that into place on the board, we pull off the clear tape. The transfer tape. So I measured to make sure I was positioning it correctly, but I'm measuring again just to be sure. And this is to help me paint the word hope without having to spend a really long time trying to do that by hand. I'm capable of doing it by hand, I just don't want to. If there's a shortcut, I'm going to use it. So I'm leaving this part in, but you're going to see me make a big mistake. So this is removable vinyl, like I said, from Cricut. And I decided after I laid it down that I was going to seal the edges of the, of the text so that it would be nice and sharp, so that the paint would be nice and sharp. And that was a big mistake because the buildup, first of all, it, it like just lifts right off. You're going to see... I put two coats of black on top of gel medium. It was almost like it was a layer of plastic sitting on top of the uh, copper leaf and it just wanted to lift. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you me, you know, dabbing the black paint in. But we're going to speed this up really fast because, you know, the point is I just wanted you to see this mistake that I made. Okay, so after that dried, I carefully started to pull it off, and that's when I start getting upset because I realize it's just pulling completely off. 
hardly any of it is sticking to the copper leaf. And, you know, I've done this process before, so I couldn't figure out what was going on. But uh, I do remember this did happen once before, and I just completely blocked it out. Anyway, I kept going. I just decided to pull the whole thing off, see how much it, it keeps and how much it just pulls off. And as you could see, most of it pulled off. That entire O is almost gone, except for the right-hand side. And so anyway, I decide to recut it again and uh, start over. So sorry, I don't have it on video, but I overlaid exactly the same way I did last time. Did not put the gel medium this time and put two coats of black, but thin coats. And then it lifted perfectly. So it was the gel medium that was the problem. And I think it looks great. So I know this was a long one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for experiencing the whole process. And um, you've all been so kind about this particular piece, watching me through all my videos. Thank you again. And don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I'll see you next time. Bye.